you are with Budget Monkey and welcome to the final episode of my Holy Roman Empire guide, Revoke Privilegia. This footage throughout this episode is resourced from not only my best playthrough here throughout my testing sessions, but also my all-time best Austrian playthrough ever. I will actually try to disclose to you exactly how this game actually played out, however that is not actually the emphasis of this episode and the focus should be on the tips and tricks remaining in the final episode of this guide. So in this playthrough, having declared war on the Italians and just handed land off to the Italians, as demonstrated in the first episode, I did obtain the Hungarian Personal Union for free. And at that stage, I thought, why not go against my own advice and see if I can actually force the Burgundian inheritance. Like I said, it's not something that I recommend you doing to actually sit on Burgundy, but I did for once in my life want to have kind of that perfect dream game. Otherwise, although Burgundy has been very low in war score and I'm just waiting for that to fire, I have been fighting other wars. In this case, it was against Bosnia in the meantime. Due to having Hungary as a personal union, I moved on to actually attacking Poland and the Balkan regions at a much sooner date. And finally, you can see that that did actually pay off having the Burgundian inheritance fire. Now, it did take quite some time, but I knew with my own tips and tricks that I was learning my own innovations here throughout this playthrough, that with these two uh, lucky moments combined, this was really going to be something else, this playthrough. Now, having a border with France, I was actually able to begin exploiting that at a much sooner date and the nations in which that I wanted to actually embalm in around that region in order for them to add their territory towards the empire was of course going to be Burgundy primarily. However I was actually able to feed other nations who desired his territory in the future. Due to the tactics laid out in earlier videos I had no problem throughout this game reigning in Italy and also feeding Eastern Europe and various locations to the empire gaining an increased amount of imperial authority. However, due to my emboldened state of the Burgundian inheritance in the Hungarian Union, I was able to continue on throughout the Balkans, actually into Greece, defeating the Ottomans at an early date as well. And with the late Protestant Reformation, I was able to pass that second to last reform before revoke at 1512, and this is why I always recommend combating that reform desire to the best of your ability. Now, soon after that, having integrated Hungary into my nation, I'm able to add his provinces to the HRE and actually pass that revoke in 1513. So I suppose the entire series is actually dedicated to revoking as soon as possible, but the one major tip that I have in regard to revoke privilege ASAP here at this stage of the game is to use the new mission system to acquire diplomatic reputation buffs at this stage of the game where that reputation is going to be paramount in regards to actually acquiring the votes from the other princes. As Austria, if you save your missions, you can easily acquire at least two reputation, but in the case that you own Galicia, you can actually potentially gain three reputation here to help enable princes to vote for you. The other thing you can do, of course, is to ally any nation that might have become problematic, like they became heretical, and actually bestow imperial grace as you go over 50 imperial authority, as opposed to accumulating more imperial authority, in order to boost your relations up nearer to 200 and acquire those votes. I remember in the past actually having 50 imperial authority, but waiting to acquire more imperial authority in order to acquire the votes from the princes, and the tips that I just gave you are going to enable you to actually revoke sooner rather than waiting to build your way up to nearer to 100. So there it is guys, that is actually my personal earliest and arguably most powerful revoke that I've ever achieved, resulting in a spectacular game here going into the future. Upon Revoke Privilegia, you will be so powerful that there will no longer be any valid rivals. And I recommend that you actually do not unpause the game upon revoking, and you actually declare war on one of your rivals first thing. Because that is going to allow you to actually get into a war with your rival and gain some additional power projection to have that stacked up, as you will no longer have any valid rivals for the entirety of the game. The longer that you can get that power projection from this last remaining war against your rival, the more that it's going to benefit you going into the future. Otherwise, I have three major tips and suggestions as to how you should play out the future of your campaign. One of which is extremely exploitative and it's up to you whether you wish to do that or not. The other two are a little 
bit more innovative in the sense that I don't really hear them being addressed or talked about so often. So uh, upon piecing out France here in this initial war that I declared for power projection, I'm going to be taking his capital Paris. And upon doing that, I'm going to actually core it up and add it inside of the empire. Once we have added it to the empire, I'm going to be using the return province button to return it to France's control. This is going to result in France actually having Paris, which is obviously destined to be his capital city, as unlawful territory of the Holy Roman Empire. When Altus comes up with France, I'm then going to attack him and take his current capital, whatever that is. That's going to actually compel him to move his capital back to Paris automatically, and that will actually bring him into the fold of the Holy Roman Empire. The real insane thing about this, when you really think about it, is that upon passing the final unification reform of the Holy Roman Empire, France, being a member of the empire, will actually directly be inherited by himself. Now, that is the case even if he is unwilling to vote for the reform. It is actually insignificant because the point in which that a nation has to leave the empire if they are rebellious is revoke privilegia, which we are beyond that point. So like I said, extremely exploitative, but also extremely powerful if you guys are willing to go to those lengths. The next tip is basically going to consist of three words, transfer trade power. Uh, this is not an immediately apparent, but as the emperor, of course, you now have subjects of all over the place, and you can actually have them transfer trade power to you. It will cost some liberty desire, but as most of you know, the liberty desire is not shared due to you being the emperor. So as long as they basically have less than 20 liberty desire, you can actually transfer all of their trade power to you as their overlord. And as long as they are below 50 liberty desire, it is actually inconsequential. So a lot of people do not realize, but Austria immediately at this stage, the emperor should dominate Genoa, the English Channel, and Venice, for example, whether you did, in fact, gain the Burgundy inheritance or not. You should be collecting with your merchants in those three areas, as well as, of course, in Vienna, if that is where you're still collecting as your capital trade region. And this is why, in an earlier episode, I actually do not recommend changing your trade port. And the last tip that should certainly not be underestimated is actually developing provinces. Not only should you be developing your own provinces to oblivion because you're going to expand primarily by feeding your subjects, but you can also develop your subjects themselves. You will be surprised at how effective this can be. As you feed particular subjects like Bohemia, for example, more and more and more, they may become rebellious. By developing their provinces, you're going to counteract their liberty desire, but you're also going to be surprised at how cheap it can be to develop their provinces that are inside plains or grasslands as your development efficiency increases throughout the course of the game. And naturally, upon hitting that final reform, you can actually inherit them regardless of their development size, but then also state up those territories regardless of their development size. So there is truly no reason not to take advantage of this and empower your own subjects and benefit in multiple different ways. Otherwise, guys, that's actually it for this episode and this guide in general. I'm sorry about the editing perhaps not being on top notch here. It's actually due to the footage being so old, these save files being so old and actually being outdated and corrupted, that kind of thing. I can't actually go back and edit it that nicely. Nonetheless, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. I very much appreciate the support and I'll make sure that my next project is completed in its entirety on uploading it next time. And speaking of next time, I hope to see you then. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you.